Hey, what's up you guys? Shane Campbell here from The Creepy and Paranormal Show. Thank you so much for joining in once again. If you are a returning listener, thank you for all your support. If you are new, welcome to the channel. Hopefully my face slash voice does not irritate you too much and you might just find some of the topics we discuss interesting on the show. Like today, we're going to be diving into the genre of reincarnation. So we're going to be looking at our second story of reincarnation on the show. So really looking forward to diving into it. It's really interesting to me to listen into these cases where kids have experiences from their previous lives or so they think it was their previous lives in some cases. So yeah, it is really exciting. Um, so I think it will touch more on the paranormal side. Uh, definitely not creepy at all. But yeah, quick shout out to Terry Corp, who's our new affiliate sponsor on the show they do all first aid firefighting uh, training so your cpr and all of that so yeah guys it's a very good life skill to have um so please head over to their page it's terry corp t-e-r-i-c-o-r-p and give them a shout and see how you can upskill yourself and get some training under your belt once again shout out to home ground coffee for keeping me wide awake all hours of the night with the amazing coffee and not to mention the great little treats that they sell. And then obviously to Invoice Cloud. Um, I'm a, what you call a multi-entrepreneur. I run multiple businesses. And one of them I use Invoice Cloud for to invoice my clients for a service we provide on a monthly basis. And without Invoice Cloud, that would just be a mountainous amount of work, which they have made much, much lighter for myself. So thank you to Invoice Cloud. Right, you know what the drill is? Cue the intro. mentioned this is going to be the reincarnation case of Ryan Hammonds who is an American boy and he holds the record for number of memories of a previous life related before the previous person was identified. So I think it's time to just get stuck straight into this case and Marty Martin was born Morris Kalinsky in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on 19 May 1903. His parents were Ukrainian Jews who had then recently immigrated to the United States. He had two sisters, one of whom died young. And in the 1920s, he and his surviving sister went to a New York City where he tap danced on Broadway as Marty Kalinsky. Later, he moved to Los Angeles, changed his name to Marty Martin and tried to make it in the movies. When his acting career failed, he opened a talent agency the Marty Martin agents and this was very successful and he became wealthy later in life. Now Martin was a staunch Republican who favored Chinese restaurants, enjoyed the beach and had an extensive collection of sunglasses. He owned a large house with an outdoor swimming pool on Roxbury Drive all the way in Beverly Hills. He traveled frequently to New York and on four occasions sailed to Europe on the Queen Mary to visit his sister who was living in Paris. Martin was married four times, but had only one daughter of his own with his last wife. He had five stepchildren, including three boys he adopted when he married the final time. He was stricken with leukemia and died in hospital on Christmas Day 1964 of a cere cerebral hemorrhage at the age of 61. Ryan Hammonds was born in Muskogee, Oklahoma in 2004, nearly 40 years after Martin's death. His parents, Cindy and Kevin, were Protestant Christians. Cindy served as the deputy county clerk, while Kevin was a lieutenant in the police department. Ryan was late speaking due to enlarged adenoids. Adenoids are a mass of lymphatic tissue situated behind the back of the nose and the throat. They help protect the body from viruses and bacteria. 
but if inflamed, can hinder breathing and speaking in young children. And when he was four years old, Ryan's adenoids were removed, pretty much like my daughter who had hers removed a couple weeks ago. He then started to speak in complete sentences and soon began to relate memories that ultimately were identified with Marty Martin. His first comments concerned three adopted sons to whom he had given his name. He said he was from Hollywood and pleaded with Cindy to take him there so he could see his other family. Ryan said that he had a big house with a swimming pool that was located on a street whose name had rock in it. He had owned a green car he would allow no one else to drive. He had liked to go to the beach with his girlfriends and Ryan had a fascination with sunglasses and said that he was often sunburned in life he remembered. He said that he had worked for an agency where people changed their names. He also talked a lot about Senator Five, whom he used to see in New York. He did not like Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was actually a Democrat. He had traveled a lot, had gone to Europe by boat, visited Paris and had seen the Eiffel Tower. Everybody has their own morning routines, but on the top of my list is coffee. Strong, hot black coffee. I physically can't start the day without a cup. However, sometimes life gets in the way and you're forced to buy a cup of coffee while on the road. And if you're like me, you struggle to find one that tastes good and is affordable. Well now, there is a one-stop solution for you. Home Ground Coffee. The name is brilliant and so is the service. Situated at Benoni Northern Sports Ground, it's a nice central point for your morning commute. And why not get a delicious muffin or pie to go along with it? Home Ground Coffee is the perfect go-to and I advise you strongly to give them a try. When you do, let them know that I sent you. Find them on Facebook at Home Ground Coffee as well as Instagram. That's Home Ground Coffee, H-O-M-E, G-R-O-U-N-D. The peak of Ryan's memories came when he was four, but they continued for years thereafter. He would recount his memories in nursery school as well as at home. Although he had made comments in response to things he had saw and heard during the day, he was especially inclined to tell his tales at bath time just before bed. Sometimes he awoke screaming from nightmares, although he could not remember what they were about and occasionally when he got up, he complained that his chest hurt and he would gasp for air. In an effort to help him remember more and perhaps learn to whom he was referring, Cindy began to borrow books about Hollywood from her local library. Ryan recognized Rita Hayworth and Marilyn Monroe. Then, when Cindy brought home a book that included information about a 1932 movie called Night After Night, Ryan spotted a photo of an actor he said was his past self. Unfortunately, this man was an extra in the film. His name was never used and the movie credits did not make clear who he was. In February 2010, Cindy wrote to Jim Tucker at the University of Virginia. She listed some of Ryan's statements and included the picture of the extra in Night After Night that Ryan had said was his previous incarnation. A month before he received Cindy's letter, Tucker had been contacted by a producer for the cable television series The Unexplained, expressing interest in documenting his reincarnation research. Tucker told him about Ryan and was sent a camera with which to record his first interview with the boy, which was arranged for April that year. And two weeks after Tucker's return from Oklahoma, the show's producers decided to move Ryan's case up their priority list. They had identified an actor they believed was the one Ryan recalled having been and flew him to Los Angeles, but he did not recognize any houses connected to this man. He did, however, recognize a house that had belonged to another director, sorry, not a director, an actor, who was called Wild Bill Elliott, who had actually appeared in Night After Night and who had previously said was his friend. It turned out that the production crew had made the identification on the basis of a perceived resemblance between the actor and the extra in Night After Night, but nothing in his biography matched Ryan's memories. A film archivist hired to take a second look was able to determine the name of the extra. He was called Marty Martin. Research into Martin's life 
showed him to be a good fit for Ryan's memories. Ryan was six years old when he was flown back to Los Angeles and given a tour of places associated with Marty Martin. He responded to all of them, leaving little doubt that his new identification was in fact the correct one. By Kevin's suggestion, Cindy recorded Ryan's memories in a journal. She began doing this when Ryan was five, but before contacting Jim Tucker and continued afterwards. And as of March 2016, she had listed 230 items, of which 55, which approximately was about 24%, had proven correct, and 15, which was 6.5%, incorrect or implausible for Marty Martin. With the passage of time, the majority, 140 or 69.5%, were unverifiable. Eight of Ryan's correct statements were of such a general nature that Cindy was able to verify them in books or through internet researches, even before she actually had wrote to Tucker. For instance, she was able to confirm the identities of the actors that Ryan recognized by name in the pictures from Night After Night. Ryan made each of the 47 correct statements about Marty Martin before his name was actually known. These 45, 47 statements were extracted from Cindy's journal and published in a book by Leslie Keane. So I have all 47 of these statements, but I'm not going to read each and every single one as it might just get a bit drawn out. But I'm just going to pick a few that I found were pretty interesting. He lived somewhere with the word rock or mount in it, which was a street address. He didn't think the boys were his, but he gave them his name. He had a daughter. He brought coloring books home. He had trouble with his older stepdaughter. She wouldn't listen and she, dis she, did she didn't respect him. Oh my gosh, my speech has gone terrible. He knew Senator Ives. He used to see Senator Ives in New York, which was basically found on a map. He was an agent and he ran an agency. The agency changed people's names. He, he saw the world on big boats where he danced with pretty ladies. He knew Rita Hayworth. She made ice drinks. He knew that Mary Lady, you couldn't get close to talk to her. Bread was his favorite food. He was a smoker. He owned guns. He didn't have a TV when he was a little boy. They had radio first. The assertion that he had died when he was 61 is particularly interesting because Martin's death certificate actually gave his birth date as 1905, which would mean that he was only 59 in 1964. However, subsequent research showed that in fact Martin was born in 1903, so Ryan was technically right. The correct date is given in Martin's online IMDb biography which was not available for Tucker initially, so that he counted this as an error in his write-up of the case. Today's sponsor is called Invoice Cloud. Now, this is really awesome if you're an entrepreneur, small business owner, or even a freelancer. You know how difficult it is to manage and then create those invoices for your customers. But with Invoice Cloud, you have everything you need to create simple professional estimates on the fly. It's easy to use and understand, and getting rid of all the nonsense so you can have more time to do what matters most which is to grow your business invoice cloud allows you to add your company details logo customer information as well as products making it a breeze to send estimates to your clients anytime anywhere now if you want to start your free seven day trial and get invoicing in just under five minutes all you need to do is head over to invoicecloud.co.za and boom you are sorted. That's invoicecloud.co.za. In addition to talking about Martin's life, Ryan commented on what happened one when he died. There was an awesome light one should go towards, but everyone came back in a new body to live again. When he died, he had gone to a waiting place rather than to heaven. On another occasion, Ryan told Cindy that he had seen her from heaven and that he had known her from an earlier life. He said that he had chose her for his mother so that he could take care of her in this life. Ryan said he recalled being in Cindy's womb and asked why she had wanted him to be a girl. In fact, 
Cindy very much had wanted to have a girl. Ryan added that he had seen her cry for a long time when she learned that she was going to have a boy. This doctor guy did a test and told you I was a boy. You got mad and said he was wrong. You just knew that I was going to be a girl. Mommy, it was daddy's birthday. You went to a restaurant afterwards to eat and you cried for a very long time. Cindy soon regretted her behaviour on this occasion, which so embarrassed her that she rarely talked about it. But she could not deny that what Ryan had said was true in all respects. Ryan's identity with Marty Martin was expressed not only in his memories, but through his personality, emotions and behaviour. As with his memories, the greatest intensity of his behavioural identification with Martin came when he was four, but it never disappeared entirely. In narrating his memories, Ryan adopted a mature tone of voice and acted the part. Once he explained to Cindy, I am not the same as the man in the picture on the outside, but on the inside, I am still that man. He was haunted by things he could not remember. Most nights, his main concerns were what happened to the children, what was my other mother's name, and what became of my sister. Ryan once saw a cartoon that had reminded him of the tap dancing he said he had done in New York. He began humming show tunes and tap danced. He asked Cindy to get him some tap shoes and started a routine in the middle of the floor, saying tip tap, tip tap, as if keeping beat. He wanted to wear what he called agent clothes, which was suits, dress shirts, ties, and black rim agent glasses. He took a pair of children's 3D spectacles, popped out the lenses, and wore them everywhere. He would play at making movies, and at a birthday party when he was four, he assembled all the children present to direct them for his movie. He yelled at the adults that he needed help because it was hard to act and direct a major motion picture at the same time. He recalled having been badly scratched by a cat. He hated cats and was afraid of them. He related that he had liked going to restaurants in Chinatown. When his parents first took him to a Chinese restaurant, he expertly employed chopsticks without being taught how to use them. When Marty Martin was identified, Tucker prepared sets of pictures to present to Ryan to see if he could pick up persons Martin had known. He did this without letting Cindy or Kevin know the correct answers, and without even informing them of Martin's name, to ensure that they did no background research in advance of the recognition tests. Ryan, who had just turned six, was in bad humour when Tucker arrived. He was not in a mood to do the test and it was obvious that he was pointing at pictures haphazardly. And after dinner, however, he was ready. Tucker showed him the first set of four pictures of women and asked if any looked familiar. Ryan pointed to one but when asked, said he did not know who she was. It was in fact Martin's fourth wife. Tucker next showed Ryan pictures of four men, one of whom he believed was Senator Five. Ryan pointed to one of the pictures. Tucker asked him if he was sure, and he said that he was. The picture was of Irvin Ives, a senator from New York during Martin's lifetime. Ryan also correctly identified a picture of Martin as a young man, in a pose and attire very different from his appearance in Night After Night. But he then began to miss and after two more trials, Tucker called a halt to the experiment. In retrospect, Tucker realised that it might have been better to have shown Ryan the pictures one at a time. He could have alternated his decoys with the targets in randomised order and shown Ryan all of them, rather than stopping part way through. Keen observed that ideally, someone who did not know the identities of any of the ident uh, individuals would have presented the pictures to avoid giving Ryan unconscious cues. Still, even if the recognition test could have been better handled, Ryan made correct selections in three out of five trials. Ryan very much wanted to meet Martin's three adopted sons and make amends for what he believed was bad treatment of them, but this never became possible. However, he was able to meet Martin's daughter, who had been eight when he had died. She was 57 years old when Ryan met her 
and naturally had changed a great deal in the interim. Ryan complained that she had not waited for him. He recognized her face, he said, but for energy was different. But sorry, her energy was different, and he did not want to see her again. For her part, Martin's daughter tried to be helpful. She confirmed the accuracy of many of Ryan's memories of personal things. For instance, that he had driven a green car, he did not allow anyone else to drive. That Martin hated cats and had bought her a dog she did not like. That he had a large collection of sunglasses. Because she was young when he died, there were many things she could not verify. But her testimony proved invaluable in evaluating Ryan's statements. Have you ever been sitting in a restaurant and all of a sudden you see someone choking? Your fight or flight kicks in and you decide to run away from the situation. Don't worry, that's perfectly normal. Most people would. And this is not down to their fear of helping, but more of their fear of not knowing what to do. About 10 years ago, I decided to do a first aid and basic firefighting course and I haven't looked back. Knowing that I have the knowledge to potentially save someone is such a relief, especially in my industry that I work in. If you are ready to take the next step, then look no further than Terry Corp. They can offer you awesome services like doing a baby proof course, basic firefighting as well as first aid under fire, which is a tactical course which is really awesome. They also do offer medical standby for all big and small events. Not only that, but Terry Corp is fully compliant with the new first aid regulations, as well as being registered as a provider with HWCTA and DOL. If you contact Terry Corp now and tell them that I sent you, they will offer you 10% off a first aid course and this is available to only one lucky listener. So don't wait. Contact them at www.terrycorp.com dot zero dot zero which is spelled t e r i c o r p or contact them on 082 850 ryan is unusual among children with past life memories in having a well-developed psychic sense many reincarnation case subjects with esp directed towards members of the previous family but Ryan's talent was concerned with people and events in his actual own life. Once he talked to Cindy about one of her siblings who had died in infancy, something he had not been told about. He went on and on about needing to buy Kevin a watch. When Cindy noted that Kevin already had a watch, Ryan said he would need a replacement by Father's Day. And indeed, Kevin's watch was broken on the eve of Father's Day. On his first trip to Los Angeles, Ryan predicted correctly that they would be given white cars. There were several other incidents of this nature. On his second visit to Los Angeles, Ryan was excited and happy to be back in the place he recalled, but the trip brought resolution, and afterwards he was better able to live in the present. After meeting Martin's daughter, he rarely mentioned his memories unless he was reminded of them. One night, six months after the premiere of The Unexplained, A Life in the Movies, on 30th of April 2011, Cindy walked into his room to find that he had removed all of his decorations related to Martin, even his Iron Eiffel Tower and pictures of New York. He told her it was time to just be a regular kid. The influence of Martin's personality persisted, however. And at 11, Ryan still loved 1950s music and wanted to go to New York. He continued to be fascinated with sunglasses and liked to wear button-down dress shirts. He followed politics and identified as a Republican. He had also become interested in Judaism, creating tensions in his Christian family. But he was no longer as hostile to cats. Although not his favorite creatures, he could now tolerate them without anxiety. So there we have it, folks. That's where we're going to wrap up this case today of Ryan Hammonds. Um, I don't know. I want to say I'm caught in two minds, but I'm going to lean towards the side of I actually believe Ryan. There's just so many things he has predicted right. Yes, he predicted a lot of things wrong. But let's just remember one thing here. He is a child. 
Now, if you have to try and remember things that had happened last year with tiny details, you are going to forget a lot of things. I mean, it's just only natural because that's how the human brain works. It only can store so much information. And I think as time goes on, it starts to delete some of the information you originally remembered, leaving you with only a bit of the story. And I think that is what's happened with Ryan. Um, not to say that's how I scientifically explain it, but I genuinely do believe his story and think he's possibly reincarnated. How? I do not know. Um, whether it clashes with my Christian belief or what others might believe. That's a whole nother topic for another day. But 100% I'm going to actually now state that I do believe Ryan Hammond's story. What is your take? Do you believe in reincarnation? Number one. Number two, do you believe the story of Ryan Hammond's? Is there, is there any other stories that you would think out there that I should cover? Um, this is the second part of reincarnation I've done. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Once again, thank you so much for always listening to the show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the hell out of it. If you want to listen to just the audio version of this, please head over to Spotify where you will find my show, Shh, Look Behind You. And yeah, that's it, folks. Thank you so much. And yeah, by the way, I am on TikTok now. So I'm trying out the whole world of TikTok. I'm very new to it. So, yeah, you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Iona.fm, Anchor.fm. There's a whole lot of other ones. You will find me there. And I think we're going to close off the show with me saying, when you go to bed tonight, do not forget to look under your bed.